So in the future, we're going to have things just printed. The, our goods are just going to appear in our houses or appear in a factory. But it's going to take a while till we get there. Right now, we use labor to do very repetitive tasks uh, outside of the uh, automobile industry. But the labor the, uh, population uh, in China who, uh, available for labor is going down. Uh, labor costs are going up, so we're trying to move some of these sorts of production facilities back to the U.S., back to Europe. This is the Moto X factory in Texas. You can see the Texas flag there. But these are very repetitive tasks. People don't like doing these sorts of jobs. In fact, in the U.S., the average age of a factory worker is 56 because young people aren't coming into factory work. How about using robots to do these consumer sorts of goods? It's very difficult at the moment. The robots are dangerous to be around. They're very hard to program. And so we, in automobile plants, we have most of the plant with all robots, no people. And where there are people, there are no robots. But setting up the robots for a particular line is very difficult. Besides the robot and the controller, you see in the bottom right-hand corner there, you have to have safety systems to keep people away from the robots. Bottom left corner, you have to have all sorts of um, sensor systems and computer vision systems that you have to integrate. And in the top left corner, you have to program them. There are only about 3,000 certified robot programmers in the world, hardly any at all. So what we see in factories are these long production line, pr production runs on the left uh, with no people around and not being able to use robots to do the sorts of things we'd think on the right, which are short production runs, flexible sorts of things. We, we can't do that. Now, there is some progress going on. This is from a couple of different European companies. Uh, on the top, robots sensing people when they're nearby so they're safe to be with. And the robots on the bottom being of low enough inertia so that they're safe to interact with. So we're starting to get towards safety of robots and people working together. But what we don't have is the ease of use that has transformed information technology. We've made our information technology easier and easier to use so that ordinary people can use it. You don't have to be a Linux programmer to use your phone. In fact, that iPhone 5 example on the right there is a great user experience where it teaches you how to teach it about your thumbprint at, in one trial as you teach it. Beautiful example of ease of use. So I left MIT to build robots for factories that were easy to use. This is a robot that a, a company I started builds. It's safe to interact with. You can be up close to it. But more importantly, it's easy to control. And it interfaces to the existing systems in the factory. It has vision. It can press buttons. It can use existing equipment. You don't have to have lots and lots of engineers to integrate it into the factory uh, to help people. And because ordinary people can program it, this is a guy named Jason on a production line in a plastics factory in Pennsylvania. Jason uh, is, teaches, the, taught the robot how to pack uh, these uh, boxes, and he's actually making plastic toys that get shipped to China for sale there. So it's reversing some of what's going on. Ease of use, though, is critically important. And here's, here's the robots operating in the factory. You see people, workers are nearby. We're going to see in, an integrated workforce in the future, people and robots working together, the robots doing the really repetitive, boring, or dangerous tasks. But here's one point. Uh, we're not good at building robot hands, and so they, hands have to be custom built. The one on the right there was print, printed by a 3D printer. That's a common use case for our robots. But how do we get from our decaying factories with old technology towards manufacturing locally in the US, locally in Europe, as populations shift in, in our local uh, labor uh, arenas? You know, in the, in the 80s, we had the Homebrew Computer Club in Silicon Valley with a lot of people with long hair with crazy ideas. We sort of see that in the maker movement right now. Could, these, could the maker movement people really do serious stuff? Bottom right, bottom picture there. It's a wooden 3D printer, a 3D printer made of wood two years ago. They just sold that company for half a billion dollars. So it's having a real impact. And as 3D printers, this is a 3D printer spun out of the media lab at MIT, as 3D printers get better and manage to mix materials, plastic and metal, get higher speed, put electronics in there, and as CAD gets more and more intelligent and includes manufacturing processes, we can change the whole nature of manufacturing. Instead of producing a product 
in a, a third country, shipping it and then retailing it. In the future, I think we're going to see product companies sell their design to retail. Retail will then locally produce on demand where it's needed uh, through automated factories which integrate people and machines together. That's where we're going in the intermediate term. And my question is, how do we get from where we are today in manufacturing in practical micro steps? Because we can't just blow everything up and get there all at once. What are the practical micro steps to get from current old-style manufacturing towards fully digital manufacturing in the future. Thank you.